Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello everyone, my name is Laura and I am an artist. I play with all kinds of materials from drawing to clay to recycled metal, whatever I can get my hands on. I'm inspired by places and spaces and the feelings we get from them. The theme we're working with today is collage. Through the previous theme videos, we learned that collage means to stick things together in French language. When I think of collage, I think about cutting out papers or magazines and gluing them together, but it can be so much more than that if we expand how we think about it. For example, sometimes I stick together metal and clay in one piece of art, or even when we draw a picture, we're sticking together the things that we draw. So for this activity, I suggest using any kind of paper and any kind of mark making tools. I have some paper that came from a big roll that I saved from going to the landfill and it's been used for some things around my studio. So it's a little crumpled and dirty, but that's perfectly fine. If your paper is ripped from a bigger piece or has something on the back or came from the recycling bin, that's totally fine. I also have pencil, and I have a marker and I have some coloring tools. These are oil pastels. So you can use whatever you have, even if all you have is a pencil or you only have a pen, that's fine for this activity. So let's get started. I'm going to start with drawing something really simple. Let's draw a food, maybe your favorite food. So we're going to draw food and we're going to draw it in the exact same way twice, side by side. They don't have to look identical, but we're going to make them look as similar as possible. So let's draw a food twice.
Okay, we have two drawings of the same food. I drew pizza. What did you draw? So let's think about two different places that this food item could be. Where's somewhere that I would want to eat this food? Where would I not want to eat this food? Think of two opposite places and add a place to each one of your food drawings. Okay, have you drawn two different places? I did. Around this size of pizza, I put a plate, a beach with some sand, the ocean, a cool drink with ice cubes in it, because I imagine that I want to eat my pizza at the beach in the warm sun. In my other pizza drawing, I thought that I would not want to eat my pizza at my desk because I wouldn't want to drop any cheese or sauce on my important papers or my computer. So I added my desk and computer and some oily sauce that made a mess on them. What about in your drawings? What did you do to show opposite places? When you focus on each of your drawings, how does that make you feel? My first picture makes me feel happy and excited to have some yummy food at the sunny beach. When I cover up the first picture and look at the second picture, this one makes me feel nervous because I don't want to ruin anything on my desk. But maybe you feel different. When you look at your pictures, how do you feel? Do you see how I started with the same thing? Both simple drawings of pizza, but by sticking together different things in each one, we may feel totally different. Now what happens if I start disassembling or taking apart each drawing? I'm going to tear the drink out of my first drawing and put it in my second one. How does that change the picture? Try it with yours. See what happens if you rearrange your drawings.
There we go. Now I have a drink in my second drawing and the drink's not in this one anymore. How does that change how we feel? You can keep going and sticking more things onto the page and thinking of new places and rearranging them and seeing how it changes how you feel. I wanna move on to our next activity. I'm not gonna get rid of these torn out pieces yet because I might wanna use them still, but I'll put them to the side for now. Okay, so I'm going to start with another piece of paper. Again, it's fine if it's crumpled or a bit dirty, or if you didn't have stuff on the back of your last piece, then just flip it over. So for this activity, we're gonna start by thinking, thinking of a place that is special. Think of somewhere that is special to you. I'm going to close my eyes. If you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes too. And imagine this place, but you don't have to close your eyes. So think of a place that is special to you. It could be somewhere you visit, like a park or a library, or somewhere you see more often, like your bedroom or a classroom. So maybe close your eyes and imagine yourself being there. What is around you when you think of this place and you imagine yourself there? How do you feel? It could be a real or imagined place. So keep thinking of that place and what is there and how you feel. And let me tell you about the special place that I thought of. So I thought of my grandma's house. That's the place that is special to me. Now, normally if I wanna show you what her house looks like, I'd start by drawing maybe the walls or the floors and the structure of the house. But for this activity, I don't care what the place looks like. I wanna draw how it feels and how the place makes me feel. Now remember, the theme we're focusing on is collage or sticking things together. So I'm going to start drawing and I'm going to start sticking together the things I think of on my page just by drawing. Now, when I think of my grandma's house, I first think of the smell of my grandma's cooking because her house always smells so good and yummy and it makes me feel safe. But how am I going to draw a smell? What if I think about how that smell makes me feel? Well, safe and comfortable. And that makes me think of the color pink. And it also makes me think of clouds. So I'm gonna draw some clouds on my page. And, and maybe I'll color them in pink. And maybe it needs some wavy lines too. Well, that's a good start. I want them all over my page though. So what about the place that you're drawing? The place that you're thinking of? Does it have a smell? What would you draw to show what it smells like? You could draw anything. It doesn't have to be perfect because remember, we're just playing around and nothing is for keeps at the end of this activity. So feel free to play around. Even close your eyes again if you want to and imagine yourself in that special place. Do you think of a smell? Try to draw it on your paper. Have fun and experiment. Okay, 
Now I have my shapes and lines and colors that remind me of the smell of my grandma's cooking. So I want to think back to my grandma's house again. What else stands out when I think of being there? What else can I stick into my drawing to make it feel more like my grandma's house when I look at it? Since the theme is sticking things together, the next things I add to my page could go anywhere or be about anything from my special place. Let's see. The feeling of carpet. The feeling of the carpet at my grandma's house is the next thing I'm going to add to my drawing. Her carpets are really old and they're olive green colored and feel bumpy on the bottoms of my feet. When I think of her carpets, it makes me feel playful because I remember playing with toys on that carpet as a kid and having fun. So I want my drawings to feel playful and maybe kind of bumpy. Mm, so I think I'm going to start with some bumpy swirls, some swirl shapes because they're playful. And even though it doesn't look like carpet at my grandma's house, it feels like it to me. So I'm going to draw something that's bumpy and playful, like swirls. Now, what else do you remember or imagine from the place you were thinking of? Is it something you could touch? When you imagine being there, is there something you sit on? or something you put things on, like a table or a shelf. Think of another thing from that place, maybe something that you touch, and draw how it makes you feel. Have you added a second thing about your special place to your page? Now that you've done that, how does this, take a step back. How does looking at your art make you feel? Is it starting to remind you of the place that you thought of? When I look at my artwork, it's starting to feel like my grandma's house and what it feels like to me when I visit there. But something's still missing. When I look at this, bumpy swirls and my clouds and wavy lines. I feel like I'm at my grandma's house, but something is still missing. I know. I want to draw what it feels like to be excited because I'm always excited to go visit there. And excited feels like, it feels like the color yellow to me. So I'll add some yellow. But what if I didn't have any colored mark makers? Then how would I show excited using just a pencil or a black marker? Maybe I'd go like this and quickly tap my paper over and over again. Or maybe I would draw fast squiggly lines that are all crazy. When I look at this page, it's starting to feel like my grandma's house, but something is still missing. I want to draw what it feels like to be excited because I'm always excited to go visit there. And excited feels like the color yellow to me. So I will add some yellow. But what if I didn't have any colored mark makers? What if I only had a black pen or a pencil? Then how would I show excited using just those? Well, I could take my pencil or my pen and go like this and tap my page really quickly. Or maybe I would draw really fast squiggly lines, like the feeling of running around, drawing like I'm running my, pen, my paper, running on my paper to show excited. I'm going to start to add these excited marks to my page. And remember, art and feelings are different for everyone. So if I draw yellow for excited, that doesn't mean that you have to do the same thing. You could add blue to show excited, or you could 
forget colors altogether and use zigzag lines to show happy instead if that's how you feel. It doesn't need to be the same as anyone else's drawings, even if you're drawing the same place, because we all feel different and make different art. So I'm going to add my excited marks to my page. want to add? What emotion or feeling does your place make you feel? How can you draw that feeling? Add that to your page. All right, so now I've added these three things that make me think about my grandma's house. But there are some parts of my page that I don't really like and some parts that I really do like because they really make me think of my grandma's house. So what if happens if we don't like part of our art? Well, nothing is precious. Nothing is for keeps. So it really doesn't matter. That's okay. It does matter, but that's okay if we don't like part of it because we have this paper that we can tear apart and stick back together in a different way. Just like the theme for this video is collage and sticking things together, and we stuck everything on our page, what happens if we start tearing it apart? I really like this corner over here. It really makes me feel like my grandma's house because I like this shape that is very sharp over here and it winds around almost like a circle and then it ends in a square and it reminds me of a lightning bolt, a fast lightning bolt. And that makes me think of the excited feeling that I get from going to my grandma's house. And we have some of these comfy wavy lines, a little piece of cloud, and a nice bumpy swirls. I like those bumpy swirls for the carpet. So I'm gonna rip out this corner. All right. So what about your piece? Try cutting or tearing a piece or more of your drawing out and moving the pieces around. How does it change how you feel? What about those pieces that we put aside from our first activity? What if you try adding those to your page? Does that change how the art makes you feel? Does it tell a different story? Try cutting and tearing apart your piece and rearranging it to see if it changes how you feel from your art.
There. Now I think I'm finished. Since when I look at this piece, right here, this is the piece that I've selected that really makes me feel like I'm at my grandma's house. I've imagined a place, drawn out fields on my page, and then disassembled or took apart my drawing and chose my favorite pieces to put back together. Remember the theme is sticking together, so the things you add to your page don't have to fit. And you can keep adding and adding or tearing and taking away until you are happy. So keep thinking about your special place and adding or rearranging your drawing until it feels like being in the place that you thought of. I'm all finished mine. I've added all these parts to it. I've kept changing it and playing around. And when I stand back and look at it, it feels like I'm standing at the place that I imagined. Now I'm going to start to clean up my workstation so that the next time I enter my art studio, the space and materials are respected and this will make me feel happy and inspired. Thank you for joining me today. See you next time.